Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Boeing Fan 727 here with you guys. Today we're going to be uh, looking at a new project that I am uh, just just started. Actually, I had it kind of rolling for a little bit here, but um, <clears throat> never really actually got around to doing much with it. Um, this was previously the Cahokia Winchester Terminal. And then I renamed it to better fit uh, what I wanted to use it for. So, hey guys, hey Lost Trains Player fourteen, hey David, I am great on this lovely. Uh, what is today? Wednesday. That is what it is. Wednesday. Got a massive pile of laundry I need to fold in front of me. I'm sitting on a bed that I need to relay my sheets because, uh, yeah, you know, chores. But we're gonna be doing this uh, for a little bit. Here it be, the Monroe, Winchester, and Gulf Lines. This is actually my new project, and partnering that big number of uh, stuff. Apparently, if I could click on it, it loves to create a whole bunch of default sessions, which I don't know why it does, but we're going to ignore that for the moment. But we're going to jump in. So this is just a project I'm going to be working on alongside the Care Bassett Valley, just while Sean has it, and, uh, well, he has the version that's slaughtering my computer. Um, so he's going to work on that for a little bit. We're going to rotate. So to give you guys an overview, uh, this is what I have. I have maybe uh, eight, eight base plates, a river with some, uh, with some track. Hey, Iron Farmer, how you doing? But uh, yeah, so I've been kind of just kind of going along today. It's actually taken me about three hours to get uh, what you see here set up because I've actually been uh, uprooting a lot of stuff, laying stuff down, ripping it back up, putting stuff down. Uh, no, happy almost birthday, David. Hope you have a fun birthday. But what I'm going for here is a uh, kind of a Midwestern, Southern-based route. Um, America, obviously. Wouldn't operate anywhere else. Um... Uh, so I was just saying, oh yeah, so kind of a um, Midwestern, Southern-based route, um, loosely taking from areas that I see every day here in St. Louis, uh, St. Louis itself. Um, St. Louis has a very deep rail history, um, from what I've known. I mean, hell, there's a tunnel, there's a, ra a very busy rail tunnel that I don't know who owns it, but it goes right underneath the Gateway Arch here in St. Louis. Um, it's kind of rather cool, and then of course there's the old Illinois terminal and just the uh, insane amount of train tracks that just go every which way. I mean, on my way home from work, I go over, I think there's a Norfolk Southern track that goes right by Boeing at Lambert Airport. There's of course the uh, Metrolink here in St. Louis, which is public transportation. Um, if I take 367 home, that gets me in Alton, Illinois. I ride alongside a BNSF bridge. And then going through Alton, there's a lot of, uh, train tracks in and around there. And then older train tracks used to service the refineries. But if I go home the 270 way, which are the highways out here, um, I go over, I think it's another UP. I go over a ton of train tracks and I see a number of different stuff. It's right outside Madison Yard here in Illinois, but regardless, uh, taking from Illinois in the St. Louis area and St. Louis itself, kind of running down the Mississippi and then uh, kind of taking upon uh, stuff in Alabama uh, because I want uh, Sean to also work on this route with me and he's from Alabama, so obviously hence why the line is also called Gulf because we will spit this route into the Gulf of Mexico and whatnot. But this is a big bridge. I haven't really named this town yet. I think this is actually going to be the town of Monroe, or in the area of that town. It's going to be a bigger city. But, yeah, my birthday's in November. November the 16th. So, I always liked, uh, actually, I loved and hated my birthday, because one, my birthday is right around Thanksgiving, and two, my birthday is always right around election season. So, everyone's always angry with politics and I remember at my birthdays, everyone was always talking politics, and that was something I hated, because I'm not a big fan of politics. Politics generally suck. How old am I going to be? Um, 21. It's a good age. After that, 
I'm not I'm not gonna care what how old I am. I'm just twenty one and whatever. After that it's all done. I don't care. Don't care how old I'll be. Not until I hit the major milestones like thirty. Uh <laughs> actually I'm flying home to Maine. Hopefully that night. And uh I promised my mom a long time ago she could buy my first legal drink, so I'll be out with her. And a lot of my friends don't live in Maine anymore, so that night I will be respectively drunk. <laughs> we'll put it that way. And then I'll fly home to Illinois, and uh, all my guys, at, all my buddies at work, said that they'll uh, they'll have to do something with me. So I'm actually not really a big drinker. I've uh, will admit my uh, my my mom. Uh, she bought me some alcohol back home in Maine, which is okay, because uh, I believe, from what I learned back in freshman year, because they went over this in a health class, if you are underage, you can technically still drink, but your parents, it has to be within your presence of your parents, and it has to be in your household. You cannot go outside, or you can't, I mean, not that you can't go outside, but you have to be on your property with your parents' control and whatnot. I don't think you can, you know, it's, it's a big gray area as far as I know. But you can drink if you're underage, if it's okay with your parents. But it has to be with your parents and it has to be in your household and they have to know about it as far as I know. So, but I'm not really a big drinker, come to find out. But yeah, my first legal drink my mom will buy, buy me, so, so... Not at the place I wanted it to be at, because that restaurant closed down. The restaurant I grew up at, but... Ooh. That's a nice aircraft. B1B. I've only ever seen one. It was actually at the... Uh... Great State of Maine Air Show in Brunswick, Maine, at the old Naval Air Station there. G gorgeous aircraft, but I'm I'm not really much of a military aircraft person. More of a uh, more of a passenger aircraft kind of guy. Love my old love my old Boeing's. Henceforth, Boeing 727, and hence my channel name. So, <clears throat> but I hope you all are doing well and. Hope you all are excited for this project. I'm fairly, I'm actually pretty excited for this. Just something new. It's always nice to start something new. Uh, the Carabasset isn't going to be forgotten. I'm still going to work on the Carabasset. I'm very much involved with the Carabasset. It's just I've been kind of mm, bored in a sense. And uh, I was working on another project called the Aristic Lumber Line, which would take, or it would not take place, or, eh, more or less. It would be uh, based in Aristic. Um, a rustic Maine, or a rustic County, Maine, and I, I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it really. I mean, I might, I might keep the project on a back burner for right now. It's just, it's going to be a, you know, a route based in a real place, and I have to stick true to the area because that's what I wanted to do was stick true to the area, and I'm just not feeling. Uh, doing that kind of project right now. Maybe later on, but it, it, I think it's just another big undertaking as well. I'm not saying that this isn't, but I mean, this is going to be another <clears throat> big-ish project, but something I can definitely easily undertake myself, in, you know, even with help from Sean, but and I will also be helping Sean on his project, the Alabama and Southeastern so that's kind of exciting. Or, it is exciting. It's not kind of exciting. It is exciting. But yeah, so we're here, and uh, just kind of laying some road work for some basic neighborhoods. I was actually trying to look for a specific road name, and I do want to exit real quick. And see if you guys know the road name. I was looking on the uh, trains forums earlier at some projects, trying to get some, uh, trying to get some ideas. And uh, if I can click it. So this road right here. I don't know the name of this road, 
but I want it because I want to replace these roads that I'm using right now with this road. And I do not, I can't find this road anywhere. So if any of you guys know this road name, please let me know. Please. Begging you. Um, I'm starting to think about it, and I really haven't gotten a good selection yet. Um, and actually, I think that would be a good thing to talk to you guys about. Um, what would be... Where did it go? Unwrote. Okay. Z Funky 01, I believe. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. <clears throat> But um, I'm thinking some larger motive power, because we are hauling uh, larger consists on the line. A lot of grain. Or not, yeah, I wouldn't say a lot of grain, but a fair amount of grain. Um, trains forge, possibly. Yeah, if you guys find it, let me know. Because like I said, I want to replace all this road right here with it. Because I, I like this road, but I don't like how far above the... Uh, far above everything it sticks out but um yeah i got a little street running scene over here just to kind of sneak by this warehouse and uh duck back in so got one kind of crossing right here i might put like a warning light like i'll show you guys like uh got it right here i had it right there where did it go? I think it's right here. Nope. Nope. Yes. Maybe have something like that on the other side. Just kind of warning people, because you don't have to stop <clears throat> if you're going this way. Because the train doesn't block traffic. It just... Maybe just a warning sign, just being like, "Hey, you may wanna, you may wanna be careful, because there be a train coming." But yeah, so I'm thinking a larger motive power, um, maybe a mixture between secondhand and modern engines. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to having some modern engines. Um, <clears throat> I definitely would love some SD40s, maybe some uh, SD60s. I mean, it's, maybe some dash nines. I I would I wouldn't I would definitely would not be opposed to some dash nines. So, but we also will be seeing CSX on this route as well. CSX will make an appearance. Uh, they will be operating on this route as well, and we will have some linkage with uh, the other class one operators BNSF B BN BNSF and the whatnot. So, these are just some NARM engines that were created. But yeah, so, just kind of thinking, uh, probably some SD60s, I wouldn't mind SD60s. Just kind of perusing through the actual models I have here. Definitely some SD40s and GP38s. No real other plan for anything else. I don't have really a good idea yet of what we want, because I literally just created this idea today. This idea is hours old. Although I do know I want some Amtrak stuff, and uh, we'll be seeing Amtraks run along here. Definitely this guy. This guy's going to be running along here, the uh, F40. I would love to have him operating the line. Still will be Amtrak and the whatnot, but other than that, I don't, I don't really know what else I want to have. Is that Dash 9 paper? No, actually, that Dash 9 I just showed was uh, a NARM engine. I believe it's a jointed rail engine just reskinned. I don't know specifically what it is. I just know it was uh, made by one of the guys in the NARM group. But, but yeah, so I'm going to continue. But, yeah, like I said, uh, I will be replacing this road with whatever the heck that other road is and whatnot and kind of getting along because down here, right alongside this river, we have a small little grain facility, this Blaine County. 
whatever grain silo I've had. Uh, um, I don't believe you can get it yet. So, because um, like I said, it was made by one of the guys in the NARM group and shared with us for right now. Uh, he had the permissions to share it. I don't know if he has yet, and if he has, it's probably on the NARM website, but I will check into that. I just know that it was something he shared, and uh, I wanted it. So, you know, I downloaded it before it got lost in the group chat for ages, but that is there. I can't share it with you guys because I don't know if it's been released yet or if the person within the group who made it is uh, released yet. So, We are going to go get that road real quick. <clears throat> I will take anything that gets us close to that. Whatever works at this point. So two lane asphalt BNSF fifty. Well dang. I'll try this. Oh, maybe I don't need the no. Hmm. Well, this is bothersome. All that for nothing. Maybe I already have it. Give me a sec. Oh, there it is. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, I just kind of want to use it for this neighborhood. So, can I do a bulk or bulk asset update? And the better question is, how does this even work? So, asset to update. No. You just woke up, Chris, really? No, I don't want the grid. I think I screwed up. Oh, no, I didn't. Awesome. No, I didn't. No, he just slept really late today, it looks like. Lazy. I'll show you guys that uh, Dash 9 here in a second again. Let me just uh, get this road all fixed up. Epic. Mmm... I wonder if we have a junction I could use for that. Z. I don't think there are any. Yeah. Yep. I don't think we're going to have a junction for that. So I guess these. Mm, I'll have to wait and see. Those will be a placeholder for now. We can obviously update those later. Doing all right today. It's uh, my final day off before I head back into work tomorrow, which sucks because I don't want to go to work. Wish they'd just hand me money for free. But life doesn't work like that. So, here's that dash nine. So I got this one, and I got uh, this one.
That one has a couple different uh, skins to it, I guess. Mm, nope, just the one. Just the one. I'll say, I feel like this is already up on the NARM page, but I could be wrong. I usually am. Always am. So. If I'm not mistaken, it's on the NARM page, but like I said, it would not would not be uh, a surprise if uh, I was wrong. And I work for Southwest Airlines at uh, St. Louis International Airport. I'm a ramp agent, so I'm the guy who throws... I, I make sure your bag gets on the plane, basically. I'm that, I'm that cool guy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get this uh, track with some uh, stiff... Probably a concrete. Yeah, that's a wicked cool job. I like it. Yeah. Maybe I could sink the track down a little bit. M, W, and G? Is that already a thing? Please tell me that's not already a thing. Gotta sneeze. <coughs> Ooh, one more. <coughs> ah, it never fails. Oh, okay. Ah, allergies, man. Oh, yeah, I can't do that with here. Ah! Thank you, thank you. I, w I don't really... S <laughs> no, I wouldn't say cool stories. I've had some uh, cool experiences on the ramp, though. Uh, definitely have uh, experienced some wild weather. Oh, that looks better. I like this better. Although I think I want to move this closer into the middle of the street. So like right here. Um, I remember once I was pushing out a plane. So I was in that big tractor, the uh, pushback tug. I was pushing the plane out. And uh, a thunderstorm and pretty bad and whatnot. But we were trying to get the plane out because we have a thing at the airport called Sparky. And it uh, detects how close lightning is when it strikes and whatnot. And uh, if it gets within a certain range of uh, the airport, we shut down operations. Um, and close the ramp so, you know, we, we we stay safe. Oh, why can't I do that? Because that trigger probably. But, um... Yeah, so... I was out there, we were trying to get the plane out, the pilot was waiting, you know, he was going through all his checklists, and I was trying to, you know, I'm informing him, like, hey, we need to, we need to push you out now, because otherwise you're gonna get stuck. And he's like, "I know, I know. We're almost done. We're almost done." I'm like, "No, we need to go. We need to go. Like, it is it is time to go. Like, we will push you out. So you know, you can you can you can finish doing your checklist. You know, contrary to popular belief, these pilots can do their checklist out there and whatnot. But they they would much rather sit at the terminal and whatnot. So we sat there and sat there and finally he's like, "All right, good, clear to push." And no sooner than we start to push, I mean, the rain starts coming down. I, it was throwing down. Like you wouldn't believe, and you know the wind starts blowing, and I'm in an I'm in an enclosed tug, so I'm you know I got windows, I got doors, and all that stuff. I got wipers, I got heat, I got AC. It's luxury in there, not. But um, so we're going along, and I mean the rain is just coming. It is coming down. I mean, and the wind's driving the rain so hard that it is raining. That the water is getting inside the pushback through the crack. You know, the cracks around the closed window, like, right, where the... You know, it's not a very thick window. Uh, no concrete or concrete. What do you guys think? Should I put concrete here for people to drive on, or what do you guys think? What should I do here? <laughs> mm. 
but um yeah i mean it was i mean it was the wind was blowing the rain so hard that it was raining inside the tug i mean there was lightning everywhere the wind was coming down so or the wind was coming through so hard that it was actually pu- pu- put it if i could talk <laughs> It was pushing the, starting to push the plane sideways as I'm, you know, I'm, I'm driving at an angle now. You want the rubber? All right. We can use concrete, which may make sense. It may not because there will be some heavier trucks coming through here. Maybe more just probably rubber. Probably right. We'll just do rubber. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was nuts. I mean, we get out there and, you know, the, the w- wind had pushed the plane so much with me attached to it that there was so much pressure on the tow bar that when we went to, uh, unhook the tow bar from the nose gear of the plane, um, it actually broke the tow bar. Like there's a shear pin on the tow bar that, uh, breaks off, you know, if there's too much pressure applied so we don't damage the plane. There was so much pressure on that no or that shear pin that it broke, that it just, it just sheared off. I mean, there was that that takes a lot to break that solid piece of metal. Um, yeah, and then I get back and I felt all bad because I broke it, and the pilot thought that something had happened to the nose gear, so he wasn't going to go anywhere, and he couldn't because the airport closed essentially. But it, it was it was a mess, and you know, then my supervisor, you know, my my MROs who are a step up above step up above my supervisors, um, were there, and I thought, oh great, they're they're gonna be so pissed. Um, oh, just joking around. Oh well, of course then. But um, I thought they were I thought they were so mad at me for breaking it and whatnot. They're like, we should have never let you push. We should have just. We should have just had you wait. I'm like, oh, well, I'm glad they're not mad at me. But, um, um, no, I've never loaded an A380. Um, I will never load an A380, only because Southwest Airlines only flies the 737. Um, and I don't think an A380 could operate in, uh, St. Louis. Don't think the airport's, uh, big enough. I mean, I'm I'm sure it would be funny. Um, I can reassure you, it wasn't. Yeah, I was actually pretty nervous. Um, I mean, St. Louis International Airport has been one of the only few airports that I know of to be hit directly by a tornado during recent, you know, in any point in recent history and whatnot. Um, some years ago, I'm sure you guys maybe remember it and whatnot, maybe hearing about it on the news. But yeah, St. Louis Airport was hit by a tornado. I think back in 2011 or 2013, but um, this was it was very reminiscent. I actually thought uh, I actually did think you know I was going to get blown away or you know something was going to happen and we were going to get hurt or something. So, but <sighs> no pleasing you guys. I'll go back to concrete. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it was 2011, because it was the same year Joplin got hit. That Joplin, Missouri got hit by a, its devastating tornado. But yeah, no, I mean, I've been fortunate enough, I've never seen a tornado. I actually approach Medium, he just witnessed a tornado uh, recently. I'm sure you guys, maybe if you have him on a Snapchat, maybe saw his uh, story there. He uh, just witnessed a tornado, I was actually talking to him about that, so... <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to stick with concrete. I tend to see that out here more often. Um, and I'm not going to sit here all day and try to figure out which uh, which uh, grade crossing cover looks better. Do you think this matches my eyes? But, yeah, so this will be... This will be... Uh, I think I'll throw on one more. Maybe two more. I'll do it the whole way. So yeah, you can get an idea for the kind of housing down here. Kind of lower... Uh, lower kind of the income basic housing and whatnot. So... Kind of this style. Like I said, 
definitely going to change this up. I don't have any better cross or uh, road junctions right now, um, just because I was previously using the yarn inner or the yarn road. So, uh, if you guys know anything or know anything that might look better, if simply connecting the roads would work. Because I, I don't know if there's a intersection for that. So, just trying to get everything. Uh, Yeah, I remember that Joplin tornado. I remember hearing about it. I mean, never really, well, <laughs> I don't want to say it's never been a problem in Maine. We actually just had a tornado this past summer up in Maine, which is uh, kind of weird. Maine doesn't, like I said, Maine never really gets tornadoes. And I move out to St. Louis thinking, man, I'm going to probably see a tornado in like right now. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wake up tomorrow morning. There's going to be a tornado like knocking outside my window like, hey, can we, uh, can we do this thing today, please? But, um, yeah, kind of shocking to, you know, see pictures back home, you know, places that I frequent often and see pictures of a tornado just running through Maine. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, those, uh, those, um, grade crossing covers can be found at, uh, on the download station, I believe. They're all jointed rail, so... Um, I think so. I don't generally hear too many tornadoes up in Colorado. I know there was a tornado, was it earlier this year or last year? It hit, um, Ottawa, Illinois, up towards Springfield, I believe it was, or did some damage up there. Oh, Rochelle, the Rochelle, Illinois tornadoes, I'm sorry. <clears throat> We've had a lot of straight line, straight line wind problems here around my area this year. I know I was in Maine, and lo and behold, I go, I go back, to, I go to Maine, and something happens back here. But yeah, some straight line winds blew through, uh, actually, right here at my house. Jeez, I, I, I don't ever want to think about being chased by a tornado. I partly like to think my car would be okay because it's like four thousand some odd pounds, but. Nothing is safe from a tornado. I mean, if it can knock over a train, you know, and throw, you know, blow apart houses, my <laughs> my little theory of, oh, I'll be fine, my car weighs like 4,000 pounds. Yep. Sure, Jaden. I don't know if that's close to a tornado, but we'll we'll let you think that. Man, I am uncomfortable right now. But yeah, I don't want to spend too much time right now with road work. I do want to get some more track work done. Kind of get that figured out. Yep, the curb weight of a Ford Crown Victoria is about uh, 4,000 4, pounds. Uh, let me double check that. Curb weight... Of a, if I could type, Ford Crown Victoria. Let me see. Yep, 4,101 to 4,134 pounds. That is the curb weight. So I'm assuming that's just empty. And the car I just drove out in Maine, I just drove a, or a 1999 Mazda Miata. The curb weight of that is 2,299 pounds. So almost, I drive a car daily that is almost 2,000 pounds heavier than the car I was driving in, uh, <laughs> no, my car is perfectly fine. I love driving that boat. And it's sad, you know, that they don't make the Crown Victoria anymore. They actually, uh, for those of you who don't know, they stopped producing the Crown Victoria in 2011. That was the last production year of uh, of the Crown Victoria, which I thought, I didn't know they made the Crown Vic that long. Um, when I was little, I always just thought police departments were like, you know, 
you know, just regular people and whatnot. They just had the same car until they decided, eh, let's just buy a new car. Nope, they regularly have to update and replace those cars. So growing up, I always thought, oh, well, my town has the same police car, you know, so my town must not spend any money. No, nope, we do, because you got to replace those police cars after a certain amount of mileage so they remain reliable. Although some towns can't afford it, so... <clears throat> But it's just, it's a very sturdy car, and plus, uh, eh, no, I will never, even if you were serious, and that was a form of currency, I would never, ever sell my Ford Crown Victoria. I will never part with that car. It's just solid, I mean, ah, it, it's beautiful. No, they are not. They are not. It is, uh, they are not bringing back the Crown Victoria. And even if they do, they can't make it like they used to because of all the regulations. Which we can thank Obama for. Thanks, Obama. Because actually, it was his administration that imposed all the new regulations. And here I go talking about politics. But um, it was his administration that placed all these rules and regulations on the police departments and the auto manufacturers for certain things that need to be done with the cop car. So essentially, Obama killed the Ford Crown Victoria. So I have a lot of uh, animosity towards Obama because he killed my car. If it wasn't for... And it was a, It's a proven fact that if all those regulations were not imposed, the Ford Crown Victoria police interceptor and possibly sedan models um, would still be in production. And yes, they have steel frames. It's actually... The body of my car is bolted to the frame, and that's what makes the car nice. It's actually called a Panther platform. Um, they actually uh, bolt the body to the or yeah they bolt the body to the frame of the car which uh, whoever thought of that idea needs to be like hailed as a hero because that dude is awesome for thinking let's bolt the body to the frame this dude that dude was a genius hey central PA how you doing yeah I'm sorry it's just I've been joking a lot lately because I've been talking to a lot of Crown Victoria guys and they all talk about, you know, how that was essentially what happened to the Crown Victoria was that. And actually, you know what? I don't, I have nothing against, just, just a disclaimer, I have nothing against any U.S. president. It's just when they all start running their mouths, that's just kind of, it's just kind of with anyone, really. I don't have a problem with anyone. It's just unless you start running your mouth or just being a moron, or when people start being stupid, or... Ah, just... Everyone's always gonna say something that bothers me. It's just inevitable. I mean, you know, there are days that... People at work say stuff that bothers me. I have nothing against anyone, really. It's just, don't do stupid stuff. Yeah, no, I actually, uh, my car is a boat. It, it it just, it sails. I don't, I don't drive to work. I sail on the daily. I always, I always cruise to work on my, on my luxury yacht. It's actually, my car is cheap luxury. Let's put it that way. Uh, do I want to have a three-way split like that? Or do I want to have two and then a third? Well, essentially, the Crown Vic, everyone thought the Crown Vic was coming back when this new, the Ford Police Interceptor or the Ford Taurus Interceptor was produced and made. It's, it, everyone's like, oh, they just, they, you know, the Crown Vic didn't die. That, you know, that's a Crown Vic. No, it's not a Crown Vic. It's a Ford Taurus, basically. And every cop I have ever talked to, I always ask them, how do you like the new cars? How do you, how do you like the, these, you know, these interceptors? They hate them. Police do not like these new Ford police interceptors. My uh, my Crown Vic's an 09. So, it's fa fairly-ish new, in a sense. <clears throat> but no, the police do not... They do not like the new uh, Ford police cars. They, they just, they're not reliable. They break too easily. 
always uh, they just they're not they're not roomy like the Crown Vic. The Crown Vic has room upon room upon room upon room. I mean, you could camp in a Crown Vic. It's just they're not they're not reliable. They're not. Eh. They're, I wouldn't say they're not safe. It's just they don't have the creature comforts that cops are used to, like with the Crown Vic, and they just they don't feel like they're gonna. I don't I don't know. I you I mean even cops have a hard time explaining what is wrong with these new cop cars. It's just they don't feel. I guess, I guess like I think sturdy is a word, and that's all. I think that's more actually more along the lines with the new uh, utilities. They they can't bring the Crown Vic back unless they would made all these <clears throat> special modifications, and they they would essentially have to bring the car back, and then pretty much water it down to a very stupid version of the car. To make it, you know, meet all these standards that the U.S. government is put in place on it, and essentially would ruin the car. Ford discontinued the Crown Vic out of respect for the name of the car, essentially. So that that's kind of why they don't make the Crown Vic anymore, is because too much respect around the. Uh, the car itself, I guess, is what I'm trying to say here. Just actually kind of want to lower this down and show more of the uh, the ballast. Um, I've never actually personally seen three-way rail junction. I'm sure they exist somewhere. I've just never actually seen one. Yeah, I like this look a lot better. Do I like Trump? Mm. I respect him in the sense that he is our president. I wish him all the best. I don't personally agree with some of the things and ideas he has. Um... I think he also has some other good ideas. I think he has a great... I think he has a great... I think he has good ideas. I just don't think he goes about them in the right way. I don't think he goes about implementing them in the right way. Um, he's very U.S.-oriented, which is nice, you know, because there. that's one thing I have complained about with past presidents. Um is the fact that they weren't, you know, U.S. oriented. They were more uh, f fixed for taking care of the world, which, you know, is our responsibility. That's kind of, I would actually say our responsibility, but that's kind of a mission that the U.S. has been on for a while now, is uh, kind of taking care of the world and solving problems. But I think, personally, we have too many issues here in our own country right now that we need to focus on ourselves for the moment before we can worry about the world. You know, do I like Trump? Yes and no is kind of the best question I can give. Um, Obama, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't, I wouldn't say he's the worst president in U.S. history. Did I like a lot of the things he did? No. I, de I definitely did not like a lot of the things he did. I think that he's a, f a fine example of Illinois politi politicians at their best. Illinois politicians are definitely known for a lot of shady things. I think he could have handled some things better. But... And and trains player, I respect your opinion. You, you know, yeah, I don't think Trump was the best person. <laughs> you know, either way I look at it, we really were handed a big crock of turd, essentially, this past election. I didn't vote. One, I didn't have my Illinois license yet. I couldn't vote. Eh, not the fact that I couldn't vote. 
I didn't want to vote, honestly. Everyone says, oh, well, it's your U.S., you know, it's your, it's your duty as a U.S. citizen. See, if Iron Farmer, it's your duty as a U.S. citizen to vote. Yes and no. My dad he served in the first Gulf War. He was a Marine. You know, my dad, I thank him for that. I thank every veteran. And when people pull that excuse, you know, people have fought and died for your right to vote, and you need to vote. Yes, people have fought and died for my right to vote. Yes, I, that's, a true state, that's a true statement right there. People have fought and died for my right to vote. But people have also fought and died for my right to stand up for what I believe in. And I believe that as a U.S. citizen, I have the choice to vote. By not voting, that doesn't make me an any less of an, an American than you or someone else who voted. I'm still an American. I still fondly love my country. I love my country to death. I'm very, very patriotic. I'm very supportive of this, this country. I love this country. We are, we are very blessed as people to be here. But I think that I also reserve the right not to vote, honestly. That's kind of my, my, my standing up for what I believe in, and I could not, in a nice conscience... Go to sleep at night knowing, oh shit, <laughs> I voted for Clinton. Or, oh my god, I voted for this dude. <laughs> His hair. Oh no, I I just I couldn't. And even and voting for the third candidate. I mean, predominantly speaking, mm, unless they have a really huge following, they're just never gonna win. And I just. To me, voting for the third party is just throwing your vote away, being like, well, I voted. <laughs> Did my duty. He ain't going to win. You know, all respect to the third candidate. Uh, was it Gary Johnson? All respect to him. He had some good ideas too, but I really don't think anyone who ran for the presidency nomination from their party was a good candidate. I think this election will go down as the worst election in U.S. history, honestly. So, oh yeah, no, I mean, I respect everyone's opinion, you know, then that, that's essentially, you know, we have the right to voice our opinion. Do I agree going out and smashing someone's business because I don't like the guy who was elected in office? No, that, that's, that is the wrong way to go about express, exp eh, if I could speak today, I'm sorry guys, expressing your opinion, you know, there, that, that's just a wrong way, but, ah, you Definitely, you know, if you if you liked Clinton, that was your that was your choice, and that is your thought. Do I like Clinton? Hell no, <laughs> hell no. Ah, uh, ah, uh, the defense. Mm. Nope, not gonna go there. That's gonna be that's gonna turn this into an hour long thing. But point being, you you can like whoever you like. I don't have to though, and just because I like. Eh, just because I support Trump doesn't mean I like Trump, but I wish him the best. He's our president, and, you know, <sighs> unfortunately he's our president, and we kind of have to wish him the best and pray to some higher being <laughs> that um, he does well for this country. So that's that. That's just kind of where I stand. But, anyways, um, um, I believe that's a gimp and or paint shop, uh, thing right there, repainting and trains. You could talk to, uh, Trains player 14, he actually uh, does some phenomenal repaints. He actually just did a... Did these beautiful Carabasset Montreal Locomotive Works RS-18Us for my other project, in case you guys aren't familiar with that. These are just stunning. Stunningly detailed. Beautifully detailed. Love these. All weathered to hell and coal dust everywhere and you 
but you know, like I said, I don't I don't generally like to talk politics much, but there there are some days it's just after hearing everything on the news and just all the crap that goes on in the daily, it's just like you hear people all the time talk about it, you know, and it's just everyone has opinions, you know, and I see all these people getting all bent out of shape over the, you know, people supporting this candidate, people supporting that candidate. Why can't we just be all cool with it? You know, I have never, uh, I have never seen people more bent out of shape over an election than this year. And I don't know why, you know, is our candidate controversial? Yeah. Not a time of politics. How will this chessy system look? I mean, they look pretty good to me. Are they still a thing? Pardon my lack of knowledge, but I don't think... Are these guys even still around? Or did they get bought by CSX? I can't remember off the top of my head. Kind of having a momentary lapse of uh, reason right now. Good album, too. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, I feel like they don't exist anymore. Kind of sad. I kind of liked them. They were cool. What was I doing? Oh, yeah. So, I don't know why I have three tracks, but I do. So, we're going to... We're just going to roll with it. Yeah, I was going to say, I... I'm sure you guys can all forgive me for when I... Whoa. Oh, okay, that's normal size. I'm like, wow, that filled in a lot of land. No, nope, just the same amount. Just zoomed in. I'm sure you guys can forgive me when I have a stupid moment when it comes to rail knowledge, but at the end of the day, I'm still just a ra I'm still just an aviator. I'm still just an aviator with a train problem. There's actually a buddy of mine at work. Uh, he worked for BNSF. He had a slogan for, uh, or I guess most people who work for the railroads have this slogan, but uh, his slogan was uh, BNSF, deliver delivering tomorrow, or yesterday's freight tomorrow. Yep, delivering yesterday's freight tomorrow. That's what he'd always, that's what he always tells me. He's like, yeah, we had an unofficial slogan for BNSF. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. BNSF delivering yesterday's freight tomorrow. What kind of trains do I see in my area? Pretty generic stuff. I mean, a lot of the, uh, a lot of UP, BNSF, uh, Norfolk Southern. S I haven't seen CSX in a long time, but I see Dash Nines kind of on the regular. That pretty much goes just around the board. I really don't see much any anything other than those, pretty much. So, hey, it's approach medium. How art thou? We were actually just talking about you and tornadoes because you got me thinking about that kind of stuff. But, um, but yeah, I see a lot of just dash nines. Nothing really out of the ordinary. In terms of uh, rolling stock, old refinery down the way, I see some auto racks. A lot of cement cars. I mean, I don't see too much. It's actually kind of boring out here in terms of rail fanning. Um, not like the Northeast, but yeah, no tornadoes. No tornadoes. I know how much you love tornadoes, so. So. Alrighty, so. 
I think we're going to get back on track here with the, um, the stream. I'm going to refrain from a talk of politics. I got that out of the way. Broke a cardinal rule with my channel to never talk about politics, but here I am. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out a basic layout. Um, I was going to make this kind of an urban area. Wow, they've been merged for that long? Holy crap. That's a long time. But, um, but yeah, I was trying to make this a more urban area. Um, actually, I was going to have some taller buildings over here, but I kind of want to keep on a kind of a more rural... Uh, actually, I wouldn't say rural, but a kind of a suburbish look for right now. And uh, once we get further down the line... I want to have maybe a small yard. <laughs> Hold on a second. Sorry, it's at a... Um, trying to... Um, I had a message I needed to send to approach. Just something I remembered. But anyways, so I'm just trying to figure out the orientation of the tracks because this is kind of a more... Uh, North-South oriented route. So... But... So just trying to get everything figured out. Like I said, there is Amtrak service on this route, so I'm also trying to figure out where to place a station. And I'm thinking, wow, my draw distance is short. Do I want to turn that up for development purposes? We'll see how bad that kills me. Ooh, I got over there. Now, the only question is, which side of the tracks do I want the Amtrak station on? Do I want the trains... I think... Hmm. <laughs> in EF, nothing. Yeah, see, that's that's devastating for Northeast standards. It was an EF, nothing. Came down, blew a few trees over, and disappeared into the into the night. In Maine, National Guard would have been out. The governor would have declared state of emergency. There would be posters up everywhere. You know, we will rebuild. Oh, that actually reminds me of the earthquake we had in Maine. Uh, I think about two two or three years before I moved out. Um I was in my basement one night, and I was down there with my brother. And um, we were just playing on my computer when I had a desktop at the time. And uh, it was in the evening. I think it was, uh, was it? I want to say it was, yeah, it's school School was in session, so I was going to say it's around, around school time. And um, I was down there with him. We were just playing something. I think at the time it was probably Roblox or something. Because I, I, I will admit, I did play Roblox when I was growing up. I mean, like Minecraft, um, <laughs> it was something that I've been playing since it came out. But I, I don't play it anymore. Um, I don't even know if it still exists. But um, I was down there playing with him, and then all of a sudden, just he just heard this rumbling sound, and the wall started to kind of like creak because the earth's moving. And just the sound alone was just... It was, it was, I will admit, I was terrified. I was very, very terrified because earthquakes are just something that are unexpected, obviously, because no one could just go, um, yep, it's 9.13. That says we're going to have earthquake at 9.20, so might want to warn everyone. No, you can't predict them. So, um, yeah, it just, it popped out of nowhere, and I, 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 I don't want to say I panicked, but I, I definitely freaked out <laughs> in a very, very, uh, very panicky sense. Okay, I panicked. So, um, I remember just bolting up the stairs and yelling at my mom, get in the door frame, get in the door frame. She's like, I'm going to go outside. I'm like, no, you're going to die. <laughs> but it, it was, it was very terrifying. And, uh, the th I think the thing that got me was, and you, you sometimes hear people talk about it, but the walls were moving. 
the walls were moving. That like the I have never seen walls like just they were moving independently, which was weird. Like the walls were kind of like and the floor I beneath the carpeting in the basement is concrete, and I'm watching the concrete kind of do like this like slow kind of up and down movement. You know, and I'm also watching my Legos because I had a, I have a huge Lego city back home because, again, very very big in a Lego. Still, I'm big in a Legos. You can never be too old for Legos. But um, my Legos were bouncing around, and actually, uh, there was a building I was constructing at the time. Um, one of the walls because I hadn't quite finished it actually did collapse. So it's kind of funny. It's a little little. Little Lego earthquake and something fell down and like you know had signs kind of laying everywhere and people were falling over. It was cool, but yeah, no, it was terrifying. Like I could not sleep in the basement for I think a few months because I was just that terrified. So, but yeah, no, and uh, mm, but uh, I remember on Facebook sometime later there was a photo circulating around most of Maine. But um, it was a picture of like a lawn chair and it was tipped over. And it was uh, the main earthquake. We will rebuild. And th- another one was a garbage can and it was tipped over with some garbage strewn about. And same deal, you know. You know, we, we survived the great main earthquake of 2012. You know, we will, we can survive anything. We will rebuild. Uh, something to that effect. But yeah, and it, w- it was pretty funny. Um, I think it was a magnitude 4.0. Um, they said that they, they could... F- that it registered on size, it actually centered 20 miles um, northwest of my house. Um, and they said they, f- um, they felt, or what, what would I'm trying to say? They, the earthquake registered on seismometers all the way in New York City. So, I mean, obviously by the time it hit New York, it was like magnitude 0.1, <laughs> probably, if that. But yeah, they said that they did pick it up on seismometers all the way down in New York because of the granite in the ground, you know, it just it just carries for a long time. It's kind of weird to think that. It's like, wow, we had an earthquake in Maine and they felt it in New York. Take that, New York. But, um, sorry, Joe. Nothing against your beloved New York. But, uh, no. So, it, it, was, it was freaky. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. I was, uh, I'm definitely not looking forward to the next one because <laughs> I'm sure I'll experience another one sometime in my life. Just hopefully it's not the the big one. But Yeah, Legos are cool. I have a huge city in my basement. I have like I have the cargo ships that float on water and I got the the town the Lego creator sets that make like that little town block. I actually have one sitting in my room here that I haven't built yet. It's the uh palace cinema and i should build it it's just i don't have a city to put it with so i don't want to build it kind of i actually i should build it and i'm driving home next summer so when i go home next summer i should bring it with me so i can drop it off so i can stick it with my city so oh well well unreal man it's been good it's been fun hope to see you next time take it easy Um, I do not have my, actually, I take that back. I have a couple model trains that I bought some time ago when my first moved to Illinois, my girlfriend had a friend and her boyfriend knew of this huge warehouse down in uh, Maryville, Illinois, who just filled with model trains and they have a model train shop there. So I was, we were going to create our own model railroad together because he had similar interests as me and it was cool. He was a cool guy, but, um. Yeah, there, my girlfriend's friend, she thought that she could stick her own two cents in about my relationship with my girlfriend, and yeah, they were kind of being jerks to her, so not friends anymore, haven't been friends for a long while, but uh, yeah, so now I have these model trains, I think I have a BO uh, GP38, and I have some, uh, I think I have a high cube box car, a couple of coal cars, I want to say that's it. I got them for like five bucks. Not all together, but I got I got each for like five bucks. And it sucks because my girlfriend bought me that engine for a Christmas present, and I've never touched it. So I kind of feel bad because that was a crappy investment. So I might sell it, and whatever money I get out of it, I'm probably going to give back to her. So just as like 
hey, thanks for supporting my interest, but I didn't use it, so sorry you spent your money on me. Regift, you know. Hey, Dylan, how you doing? Um, I want to say it's H O. Don't question or don't don't question don't question me. Don't quote me, but I want to say it's H O scale. I've never actually properly had um H O. I've never actually properly had a model railroad. I've had I have a model airport. I have a uh, model jets down in my basement, which actually you can see them on my channel. That's originally what I was running on my channel was. Gemini Jets, but um, yeah, I have a, actually a large, large collection of model air model jets. So, VC twenty five A. What the hell's a VC twenty five A? Pardon my not un knowledge. So. <laughs> Yeah, nah, that, that was kind of the other thing. It's like, I don't have time for much of anything. I mean, I barely have time to do <clears throat> this anymore. So, uh, keeping up a model railroad would just be asking for lots of trouble, basically. And plus, it's like I'm going to be moving out in a few a little bit here, you know, close to a few months, so if I wanted to start a model railroad, now would not be the time. And even when I do find a place to live out here in Illinois, I mean, it would not be the time then either, because I'm not going to live here in Illinois forever. Uh, text, please, Dylan. Welcome back, Iron Farmer. How you doing? Alright, so it is 916 local. I'm going to go until the top of the hour, guys, just because I do have to fold laundry before my girlfriend gets home because I told her I would do that and I would like to get my bedding out of the dryer so I can make my bed because I have made my bed every day since May 20th and I'm trying to be an adult and do adult stuff and be productive and keep my room clean and all that fun fantastic stuff so to keep the train a rolling But yeah, um, I just I also find model railroading just very expensive. So, um, California. But yeah, no, I model railroading is just way too expensive for my liking. And you know, that's cool. I mean. Some of the I, I look at some of the stuff that people have made, like there's a guy and actually someone created a uh, rail rail car. I think it's a uh, what is it? It's uh, I think it's actually back up here. Should be right around here. No, not Woodsville. Crap, what is it? Oh, it should be right around here. Maybe it's up here. It's the... Ah, uh... oh, shit, what is it? Allagash, that's right. Someone created a model railroad called the Allagash Railroad, and, you know, that's his logo and whatnot, and looks like old mech stuff, but, yeah, quite an impressive model railroad. Very, very beautiful. Uh, from the photos I've seen, but yeah, no. So this, and actually, about the same time I was getting into model railroading recently, I got into uh, Tain. So, and Tain was actually my solution to model railroading because obviously. I can create as much track as I want to. I can operate whatever I want to, wherever I want to. And relatively speaking, it doesn't cost me much. You know, maybe $20 here for a for a train or $10 here for a train. Or I can get them on sale. But the routes, I can create whatever I want. I can download all sorts of stuff for free. And, 
you know, so Tain was my solution to expensive model railroading. So. There's 11 people watching this? Wow. That's actually impressive. That's the, the biggest turnout I've had, actually, ever, for anything. <laughs> But see, I'm just trying to bring this down a little bit so I don't have to keep raising the terrain up. And these have a pretty good height to them. So, yeah, no, I know the, I think the train I have, it's non DCC. I forget what it is specifically. I believe it has to have a look. What, what does it have to have? It has no noise. It has a basic light in the cab. It's a very basic model, but it can easily be re-equipped and whatnot. It's just a basic B and O GP thirty eight, but and it comes with the um, very basic uh, couplers. You know, I didn't buy it for much, but not much of a, a steam engine guy. And yes, I did, Dylan. I've just been uh, kind of busy with some stuff today. Kind of getting some uh, financial things in order. But I will take a look at that here in a little while once I get off here and start folding. But I did get your text message about that job. Congratulations, dude. Happy for you. So does that mean you're not going to be uh, on the mountain this year? Or... Hashtag fake news. <laughs> oh. Side note, that's one thing I will say about this president, is he's definitely given our fair share of laughs with all the memes that have come out. So we kind of have to thank him for that. You jerk, you saw Air Force One. My favorite Lego type, definitely City. I, I prefer City because that's just kind of me. Um... I, right before I moved out, I was kind of getting big into uh, kind of I would I guess the more relative term for it is kit bashing, possibly if that's kind of a term. Just taking two different sets of Legos. Um, Technic's cool. Ah, uh, Technic was awesome. Never did have too many Technic sets, but I always loved playing with uh, people's sets who had them and whatnot. So. But um, I always love kind of taking two different Lego City sets, like two different, because the, the thing that they love doing is creating a lot of uh, sets that already exist, like reduplicating, like they have created so many fire stations in the past few years, it's ridiculous. So I love taking um, some of the fire stations that we have, because, I mean, it's a small little area, and we have like three fire stations, which is ridiculous for that kind of size little area to have three fire stations. So I took two of the fire stations because my brother had just received another one. So now we we're going to have four. I'm like, oh my God. And he's like, well, I want to put it in the city. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. But we have a crap ton of fire stations. And then we have a crap ton of police stations. I actually had to retire a police station. But I love taking some of the sets and combining them. And I actually created a pretty, pretty darn looking, pretty good, yeah, darn good looking fire station. So... I was pretty happy with it. So. I just wish Lego City would create more like houses and public things because I've noticed a lot lately they're doing like Lego City like volcano mining and Antarctic mining and all that stuff. It's like, no, why can't we just do like city stuff? Yeah, I don't English very well tonight, so I don't know what the big deal is. I'm not taking any meds, so 
Um, let me see. We got some good trackage laid down. Oh, we zoomed out very far. So we got a left, then a slight right, and we got three tracks. So I think here we'd kind of be in the city. So... <laughs> boring. Boring fan 727. But, um... No, I mean, I would just... I kind of... It's kind of just finishing up the top of Legos. I would just love it if they created, like, you know, just houses. Because they did that once. They created, like, a townhouse. And that was the best thing ever. I didn't get it, unfortunately. I really wanted it, but I didn't get it. And I wish I could find it. And, yeah, Legos are getting expensive. Like... My brother, we he gets this thing and we dub it his Bible. He gets the Lego catalog, the magazine, and whatnot. So, we call it his Bible because he used to take it everywhere and just show everyone all the cool Legos and whatnot. He'd he'd show it like a Je he'd show everyone the Legos like a, it's a Jeho like he's a Jehovah's Witness or something. So, but um, yeah, no, and you know, just in recent years, just looking how expensive Legos are getting, like even going down to Walmart and just seeing what they have, because, you know, I'm always just kind of looking and seeing, you know, would he like that Lego or would I want that Lego, because let's face it, when I go to Walmart to look at Legos, I'm not only looking for my brother, I'm looking for myself, so. But, uh, yeah, just looking at some of the prices, I'm like, my God, they've gotten expensive. Like, that is just, that is crazy how even expensive the little, even you know, the small sets have gotten, and it's just, I think it's getting ridiculous. And that's the thing, it's like, and I've always told people who buy me Legos, just get me a big bucket of Legos. Just get me a ginormous bucket of Legos so I can, you know, just build my own. And no one ever would. And and I would always go out and forget to be like, hey, can someone, you know, maybe get that for me because I'm a broke adult. <laughs> so I'm a broke adult with a train and Lego problem who works for an airline but still is always broke, so... Yeah, so if you guys are ever looking like like a care package to send me, just give me a big bucket of Legos, please. <laughs> well, no, I'm not kidding. I mean, literally, he was a Jehovah's he he was a Jehovah's Witness about Legos. It's like, you know, have you heard the good brick today or something like that? I don't know what a Jehovah's Witness says. I really don't give him much of my time. So, although there was this woman, uh, when I was living at home, right before I moved out, uh, stopped by one day while I was out mowing the lawn, and, you know, she was a nice old lady, and, uh, pretty much a Jehovah's Witness, but, you know, I'm, I, uh, I wouldn't say I'm very religious, but I do believe in God and whatnot, and that's, that's the route I, I take, you know, I'm, I am a firm believer in that there is a god and whatnot but you know that that's that's my that's my believing not yours so you guys believe whatever it is you want to believe and i'm perfectly okay with that so but um stopped by one afternoon and uh, while i was out mowing the lawn when my mom was up to camp and whatnot and uh started talking to me you know typical routine and you know they, they, they'd pop by every now and again and i told this lady uh you know i'd mentioned i'm moving off to st louis and whatnot and you know, i believe in uh I mean, hell, I didn't give her, I didn't give her a time, date, and place just on the off chance they happen to show up with Jesus or something. But uh, you know, I uh, um, my mom was telling me this past time at home. She's like, "Yeah, your Jehovah's Witness friends keep popping by." I'm like, "My who?" And she's like, "Those Bible thumpers and whatnot." I'm like, "No, you know." I'm like, "Are you kidding me? They still pop by?" And she's like, "Yes." I'm like, "Huh." didn't think that they would considering i told them i was moving it's like they think i was lying or something like oh he must be hiding in the back <laughs> give me an amen if you're okay <laughs> or something like that i don't know but yeah they they apparently still pop by i'm like i told them i was moving <laughs> and they still come by i'm like oh, man you can't get anyone to believe in jesus if you keep pestering their mother Mother's gonna make you meet Jesus a little bit sooner if you keep bothering her, <laughs> frankly, so. But. Uh, 
Uh, looks like a lot of letters and numbers. You know, no offense to steam engines. I find them very interesting and cool to watch, but they're all the same, <laughs> honestly. I I mean, there there are a few. Yeah, they're different, but most steam engines, to me, just kind of the same. I never really found much interest in uh, steam locomotives, so... But, like with everything else, to each his own. I'm actually going to extend this curve out because it kind of tightens up right down at the end. Yeah, no, it's... But even still, it's like people who just... Who have a big tub of Legos that are selling at a garage sale like must somehow like look up the conversion rate or how much like a brick is going for because any garage sale that I've ever come across where there's a big bucket of Legos, they're charging like... They are charging almost full price for, like, a brand new set. And, I mean, yeah, you could think about it. You're probably getting a steal, considering probably some of the vintage Legos that are in there. Because I've, I've come across a few vintage Lego minifigurines. Um, yes, I said figurines. I don't know why I said that. It's a minifig. But um, I've come across a few, and I actually have a few. Uh, some of the old Octon gas station workers or Octon employees. I think I have a couple of uh, old police officers and whatnot. And that's that's also another thing is like they're changing a lot of the style of the Legos nowadays. So I mean, yeah, they, they've done it over the years, but you know, it's like it's hard to keep a uniform look to per se your police department if you're going, you know, if you've been collecting for a long time with all the new uniforms and whatnot. And it's just, it's hard. <laughs> Legos are becoming expensive, so. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't know why I said that. That was a, that was a bad, that was a mistake. I'm sorry. So, time is it? Who's got the time? It's 21.31. <sighs> Man, I just feel like I just started this stream. Now I gotta wrap it up soon. And that curve. I feel like it gets tight right here between these tracks. I think it does. I think there's actually less space. Let me see something. See how much room we can get between a couple engines. I do mean a couple engines. Oh, that's good. Yeah, my buddy he who worked for BNSF, he tells me times where they'd be coming along and they had to fold in their mirrors because that's how much clearance they had between another approaching engine. All right, trains player, we should be here. I don't think we're going anywhere anytime soon. But So yeah, like I said, this is going to be coming through a downtown-ish area and whatnot. We are actually kind of far away from the bridge. I'm actually thinking about having that river kind of kind of meander here and then kind of come to the side because this is a uh, river's running east. And I need it to go south. So, yeah, we're going to have this river run south. So, we'll come in front of the city. Alrighty, approach. I will be here. Take it easy, man. And I will talk to you later. Hopefully, catch your stream on Saturday if I can. Alrighty, so now it's just now it's just me and you guys. Nine people watching. Like I said, pretty darn good turnout. That's uh that's a first for my channel. So so I'm thinking, like I said, having a station somewhere right around here. Keep your eyes on the sub box, your subscriptions. So when his stream pops up, you'll see it. The sub box.
Alrighty, so what do I have for train station? Train station. Probably just put in a station. Or right, we'll just kind of roll down to the S's. Oh, let me see. Sleeper, slow children. I always love those signs. It's like, why would they? <laughs> My dad told me that once. He's a. Uh, he would always talk about slow children. He's, he'd tell me he's like, man, I'd always feel bad when I was growing up, going through a neighborhood and seeing that sign because I'm like, man, that must suck to be that kid, and they put up a sign for you being like, hey, careful, this kid's a little slow. Like, you know, my dad thought they were talking about like some kid who was like big or something like that or whatnot or you know was like a little like slow to the punch like maybe was a little special and whatnot my dad's like man that must suck they put up a sign for you saying like hey careful this gets slow but it means like hey you're in a neighborhood just watch out for children spears railroad bridge number two did my game crash no free caking content KUID 2-2. Two two, oh, holy crap. <whistles> Have a bridge, why don't we? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a bridge. God. Oh yeah, no, I'm going to do a rail yard. There's going to be a mul there's going to be multiple towns along the way. Um, and whatnot. Still trying to th figure out names and stuff. Ooh, St. Louis, Dixie, St. Louis, St. Louis. Where the food is good, but not too good, eh? Soulard. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I got St. Louis-ish buildings, so we're gonna plop these in. These will be, these will be background buildings, obviously. Very, very background buildings. Good, 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 good. Now I can achieve that St. Louis look. But I want a station. I need a station. Um, that's all right. If you remember your question, you know where the chat box is. And you generally know where I am. Actually, I hope you don't know where I am. That'd be a little weird. Be a little weird if you knew where I was right now. Yeah, I'm going to place some distance between the passenger track and uh, the main line. Ah, crap, I meant to go to the store today. I forgot to grab Pepsi. Dang it. <laughs> I don't want to go to the store. It's nighttime, and Walmart gets scary at night times. Actually, let me take that back. Walmart doesn't get scary at night times. It gets stupid, der, at night times. Like, if you ever, do, if you ever feel like, if ever, if someone ever calls you stupid, or you ever feel like maybe you're a little unintelligent, just go to Walmart after 9 p.m. Yeah. You can, uh, the rest you can figure out on your own. Now, it's amazing how, how you can go from maybe average intelligence to the smartest human being in the whole store by going to a Walmart after 9 p.m. It's actually quite sad, but, you know. So, I need a train station, like, now. Because ideally I'd like to have that done before I exit for the evening. Anyone know any good train stations that might fit a Midwestern theme? Rockport Freight Depot. Or if I'm from England, Depot.
Well, I know NARM, the group I'm a part of, has uh, St. Louis Union Station, but I don't exactly want Union Station. Actually, do I already have it? Just trying... Wait, did I see station? Station lift. Oh. Hmm. Amtrak Type 50C station? Oh yeah, I don't really want to create my own station though. Kind of weird how they include the, the uh, interior. Well, forgot to include the bathroom. But you get the gist. But yeah, I don't generally want to create my own station. I was thinking of something a little bit bigger than that. Hmm. I uh, don't know specifically. Could be both. Bath Ironworks. It's up in Maine. Uh, need a station? That's why I don't do passenger operations. Go to the DLS. Sorry, cracking my fingers. St. Louis Station. Ooh, nice. Uh. Don't really want Skype open right now. Or SketchUp, that might be killing my frames. Maybe if I put a dot. Nope, that actually made it worse. Maybe if I actually type St. Louis. Oh, actually, no, that gives me nothing. So what am I typing? Actually, let me just look up station. Well, I have some time here. Brick station large, gas station pump prices. Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh. 
<laughs> Not seeing a whole lot. I wish I could look it up by like region. I don't want Polish and I don't want Russian and I definitely don't want German. Or British for that matter. Let me skip a few down. Ooh. Dave Snow could be promising. We'll try it. We'll try it. See what that brings. Uh, wish we had a Steam Workshop. That'd be so much easier. How many stations does he have? A hey, trains player. Well, I'll be. He's even got a McDonald's. No way. Now there's only like a few. Oh, and there's like a few. So yeah. One will download a platform. You know what? I'll just download them all. Just because I definitely could use a variety. And if it's Amtrak, then I need Amtrak, so I don't think I downloaded that, so probably should have just gone top to bottom. Probably would have been the easiest thing to do. I don't think I downloaded that. I don't think I downloaded that. Done. Nope, nope. Damn it. Nope. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I need to download a lot of Dave Snow stuff. He has a lot of good content. He's kind of like the bread and butter to trains. Skull kill, shell kill station. Skull kill station. Yeah, I don't even know how to say that. I've seen the word before, and I've said it once or twice, but I forget. It's all right, Loss. Welcome back. Let's see how slow this is downloading. Oh dear God. <sighs> I wish it would download so much faster. Yeah, we'll just we'll call it good there and uh, jump back in. Why do I have that many? Every time I come back, I always have a new session. Delete them all. I just have one default session. You know what? I believe Sean and Approach are my mods. Um, usually Sean's always around, but he's still not feeling well today, and I know, like I said, Approach is a mod. Um... I don't want to have too many mods running around my channel because, let's face it, I only generally have nine people. 
Well, I don't generally always have nine people, but it seems to be that I only have about nine or so people watching, so I can generally hold my... Uh, approach should be a mod. I made him a mod. The two mods that I have and intended to have are uh, Sean and Approach. Of course, I can hold my own pretty well, and my general rule of thumb is uh, no politics. We broke that rule tonight. No religion. Definitely broke that tonight, so... Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Let me just turn the sensitivity down. Yeah, Approach, like I said, he should be a mod. I'll double-check that. But yeah, those are generally my mods right there. Like I said, Sean's usually always here, and you guys aren't that much of a handful. It's not like Approach's streams where he has almost upwards of 100 people watching. You know, at any given time, I probably only have, at the most at any given time in chat, I probably have about the same five people. And then... At any other given moment, one I have watching, probably... today. Today's my, been my largest stream ever. Today was a milestone, so I appreciate you guys for making that happen. 11 people watch today, which is uh, which is good. I'm definitely happy that my name's getting out there, and you guys are, are coming over to watch and uh, st stay for the madness. But, uh, yeah, I just I don't see the need for, um, you know... Uh, that many mods. Although I will say, um, let's just uh, kind of refrain from the caps a little bit. Just kind of calm ourselves, trying to have a calm stream, which reminds me I needed to have some tea tonight. Because there's one thing I always love having when I'm not feeling well, because I'm not feeling well. Uh, my allergies have been kill kicking my butt, but there's always one thing I love when I'm not feeling well or my allergies are killing me. I'm just kind of bleh. It's a nice cup of tea. I do enjoy coffee very much, but coffee and being sick does not uh, does not go well. But yeah, but uh, but no. But like I said, guys, you know I do appreciate you all come for coming around. You know I, I say it time and time again. You know you guys make this enjoyable for me. I enjoy my little community and whatnot, and you know, and yeah, there are times where it's just kind of like. I don't want to chat because I'm just like bleh. But it's just like you know what? You guys come and watch the stream. You make you make this channel what it is. You know you keep my content driving and whatnot. So the least I could do is definitely you know talk with you guys and uh, entertain entertain you guys and um, just be here with you because you took the time out of your day to come around and that is definitely not what I'm looking for. Uh, that is definitely, uh, yeah, that's more, that's more California, or, than Southwest, at least I think anyways. See you, Iron Farmer. SP4449. He said you need to download 4449 from the JR Freeware. No, the uh, the stream should be online as far as as far as I can see. I don't know how what you guys see, but uh, yes, go ahead, Chris. Alrighty. I was kind of hoping those stations would be downloaded by now, but...
Well, sometimes you subscribe to people that do a sub for a sub. And if you sub to them, like I know you sub to me. I think I sub to you. I try to I try to hit everyone I can. It's uh definitely try to do so, but sometimes that happens or maybe people uh sub to you just as a kind of a friendly thing to do and whatnot. It's just kind of a kind of a a nice thing to do here on YouTube. Not people might not necessarily sub to someone because they have content on their channel, but maybe, you know, they God, I don't know. Number of different reasons why someone might subscribe to someone who doesn't have videos on their channel. So let's take a look at the time. It is 9.56, so we are just about out of time. And I think as the placeholder, just to remind me, hey, you need to put a station here. We're going to lay down the, the train. But yeah, so I think that's where we will stay. But uh, but yeah, like I said, I don't uh, I don't really have a fleet planned yet, guys. I would consider the Dash Nine Forty Four, um, just kind of for some larger motive power. Of course, we will see these running around the line for CSX and whatnot, and other such operators. I wouldn't mind that running around. Definitely the SD Sixty, possibly the GP Forty and GP Thirty Eight. But other than that, I don't have a whole lot else in in mind. Um, yeah, there's just not a lot out there. Maybe the maybe the uh, let me see. Um, the operators on this route are CSX, of course my fictional, and you will see some UP, BNSF, and, uh, will Norfolk Southern be here? Possibly, I don't know, Norfolk Southern might make an appearance, but, uh, I definitely have a lot of Union Pacific engines that I want to, I want to show off, or just start using in general, like, all this freeware jointed rail stuff, you know, Desert Victory, and the Dash 9s, and whatnot, and, and the uh, SD40. Or I have this SD60M. Ah, that might be a thing. I don't know specifically. I haven't really created a big backstory for this line yet. Because like I said, it's... Uh, I just, just thought of this whole idea today. I think I have a yeah, I have a C forty, don't I? Yeah, that was a payware engine I bought a long time ago. I don't think the, the UP uses the C forty anymore, but uh I have it. I'm sure I could definitely use it around here for something. Yeah. Yeah. I like BNN. BN BNN 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 BNN. Don't I have another S D forty? I going to say, I thought I had an SD40. Different skins? Let's see. Sorry, just taking a look. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I would, I would like to have UP kind of be the other, other operator out here, and of course CSX. And No, well, actually, I would say almost all my locomotives are freeware. Um, I don't really have money to throw around to buy uh, locomotives and whatnot. I've bought very few. That C30, those Amtraks, I have a Amtrak P42. 
Um, that Guilford engine I have, uh, well, actually both my Guilford engines that I use, the uh, GP40, yeah, 40, um, and that GP9, our payware, and uh, I have a uh, CN SD40 that I can't use because it's not compatible, but that was payware. Other than that, everything's uh, everything is freeware, so... Here's a BNSD60 Tiger Stripe. Wish that uh, beacon beacon worked. But yeah, so like I said, we'll see. Uh, we'll see kind of what you see here for UP and whatnot. And uh, CSX. I have a fair bit of CSX stuff. Kind of the larger. Well, I mean, CSX does have trackage, right? So probably SD60s, uh, Dash 9s. I have these decent SD70s, but they're okay. Definitely not the best. They're, they're meh. We'll put it that way. You know, all these CSX stuff that I got. and well, Like I said, we'll see BNSF. Do I actually have any BNSF, BNSF stuff? Actually could say their name today. Yeah, I got this Dash 9. It's alright. And I got this GP38. But I think we'll stick to the uh, larger power. I'm actually beta testing a BNSF engine, I think. Yeah, it should be anyways. But anyways, guys. Um, so I will see you all later. Have a good night. Lost the spirit. Lost the spirit. And I will see you all in the next stream. Expect some uh, more progress to continue with this signaling. Um, basic track layout, obviously the station. So yeah, that'll be for the next stream. And that next stream should be next Tuesday. Yeah, probably will be next Tuesday. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next one. See you, trains. See you, Chris. Bye, lost. Like I said, I will see you all later. So, you all have a good night, and I'll talk to you guys later. Over and out.